How do we know if a particular kind of antibiotic stops bacteria on our petri dish from growing? We can use an assay called disk diffusion, or the Kirby-Bauer antibiotic sensitivity assay. We use little paper disks that are soaked in antibiotic. Generally, scientists buy these disks already soaked in the antibiotic. We take the disks and put them on a petri dish that is thick with bacteria. The antibiotic diffuses into the auger while the plate is incubated and stops growth. Let's explore how this works. We soaked the antibiotic disks in food coloring so we can see how the antibiotic diffuses into the auger. Notice that the concentration decreases as you go farther from the disk. Now let's put them on an inoculated petri dish. For this petri dish, we'll grow a lawn of bacteria. Last time we streaked out the bacteria to get individual colonies. This time, let's cover a whole plate with a thick layer of bacteria. The bacteria grows up into a lawn. Now, let's put them on an inoculated petri dish. This way, we can see where the antibiotic stopped bacteria from growing. Notice how the bacteria still grew where there was a low concentration of antibiotic. Now that you have the basics, let's see how scientists do the Kirby-Bauer antibiotic sensitivity assay. To perform this experiment, you need gloves, if provided, tweezers, sterile cotton swabs, a marker, six discs, each pre-soaked with a different antibiotic, a plate with single colonies, a blank plate, and a container for waste. Here, we have two scientists demonstrating the Kirby-Bauer antibiotic sensitivity assay. Scientist number one, who's wearing purple gloves, will perform the assay flawlessly. Scientist number two, who's wearing yellow gloves, will make nine mistakes. Let's see if you can spot them. First, put on the gloves, if they are provided. Next, Label the bottom of the plates. You can write your initials, the date, and anything else your teacher would like. Take out a sterile swab. It's important not to contaminate the cotton tip. Draw a black dot next to the tip. This will help you locate which side of the cotton swab is inoculated with bacteria. Find a single colony to pick. Make sure you can see the black dot when picking the colony. Now, inoculate a lawn on the blank plate by spreading the bacteria evenly. It's important to cover the whole plate. You can spread the bacteria again in the perpendicular direction. Discard the bacteria-covered swab in a waste container. Divide the plate in sixths. This will help you evenly place the antibiotic discs. Use the tweezers to get one antibiotic disc and place it in its own section of the plate. Gently tap the disc to stick it to the auger. The letters TE are an abbreviation of the antibiotic's full name. In this case, TE stands for tetracycline, and the numbers tell us the concentration of the antibiotic on the disc, 30 for 30 micrograms. When placing the discs, use the lid to shield the plate from contamination. If the disc falls out of the tweezers, leave it where it falls. 
Do this five more times for each of the antibiotic discs. Check the labels on the discs to make sure they are all different. We want to test how susceptible the bacteria is to each kind of antibiotic. Place the plates upside down in a 37 degrees Celsius incubator for 24 to 48 hours, or incubate as instructed by your teacher. After the bacteria have grown, you can see clearings around the antibiotic discs. We call these the zones of inhibition. The bacteria are only susceptible to some kinds of antibiotics. The purpose of the Kirby Bauer assay is to determine how susceptible the bacteria is to each type of antibiotic. Can you think of a way to measure the susceptibility? Remember how the antibiotic is most concentrated near the disc? Well, what concentration do we need to kill the bacteria? You can measure the diameter of the clearing to determine how susceptible the bacteria is. You can draw a line with a marker to help you measure. Be sure you measure in millimeters. Each antibiotic disc is soaked with a different concentration of antibiotic. The numbers on the disc refer to the concentration. Also, some antibiotics are just more effective than others, even at the same concentration. Therefore, we can't use the diameter alone to determine the susceptibility of the bacteria. Use the reference table to determine whether the bacteria are susceptible, resistant, or if they have an intermediate phenotype. The reference table provided by your teacher takes into consideration these factors, as well as how each antibiotic is metabolized by the human body. Always pay attention to unexpected results. After all, penicillin was a surprise discovery. Let's take a look at these students' plates. Do you see anything interesting? What can you tell me about these colonies? They are resistant to the antibiotic. And how did they get there? Look at this disc. It's too close to the edge to measure the diameter, but can we still get accurate data for this antibiotic? Well, we can measure the radius, take the radius and double it to get the diameter. Let's review the Kirby Bauer antibiotic sensitivity assay. Plate a lawn, place antibiotic discs, grow the bacteria, measure the diameter of the zone of inhibition, and refer to the reference table. And that's it.